Do you think that the way you handle your situations with your kids, like most of the times, is actually how you would want your child to like? Child. Where your child is passing through one situation or the other, or you know, is the situation where he or she needs an answer without judging that child. We watch the play that happened here. So how actually do we communicate with our children? Uh, Who wants to go, please? Do you have any answers? Like, what's the best way you communicate with your child? Okay, let the microphone find the hand of the connoisseur. Quickly, please. <laughs> Since we're wasting time to answer. Yeah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. I think you have to like, depends on the, quest, the, the, the support that the children need, depends on what they present. So first, show empathy, like feel their feelings, what they are feeling. Don't just be judgmental like they play like before. And still find a way to tell them the truth with whatever they are telling you. I don't, I, I don't know if I can use the scenario. See, find a way to tell them the truth and encourage them. Say, for example, your child is finding it difficult to make friends. Sometimes you notice there are some attitude as well that the child is possessing at home that you know that will make them to struggle. So encourage and tell them it's time the friendship will come. But while you are trying to make friends, also work on yourself. See whatever you are doing to people, if they do it to you, if they will like it. You understand? And they don't have to throw themselves into friendship or in the name of making friends, then they end up in abusive relationships. So try to come down to their level. Relate with them and also tell them your struggle why you were growing up because we adults, it's like we never failed before when we are adults. But we need to also let them know that we also fail some in some aspect of life and this is how we do it. This is how God helped us through. Just relate with them, tell them the truth, encourage them. And above all, always also give them the word of God as well. You know? Let them feel like you are one. You are, you are not a soldier, you know, like bossing, 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 bossing my command. Just relate with them so that they can be communist with them. You are just telling them the parts. You are chasing them away. Because they'll find out the truth outside the living. They'll find the, the world where uh, we give them the information that they need. We are living in a global generation. We have to call every oneness. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that will satisfy the heart of every parent here. Our youth, are we okay with that answer given by our mother? Are we okay with it? You have to say something in response to our answer. Okay, let's hear you. Um, I have a question for all the parents. Do you, do you think that... <laughs> Go ahead. Um, do you think that the way you handle your situations with your kids, like most of the times, is actually how you would want your child to like, like, which, okay, so sometimes when parents are like, come to you and tell you something, like you go to them and you tell them, oh yeah, I have a problem with this, I have a problem with that, the answer doesn't usually like, it's not what you want to hear. So she said that, um, Encourage. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. think that your encouragement is actually there? Like as a parent, your encouragement, your encouragement is fully there. Because I don't, I don't think that is this there for everybody sometimes. Okay, I think the question you are asking us is actually we should be asking you, another youth alike. Uh, you, you have what you want to hear when you are passing through a particular situation. If I get you right, uh, you are asking us now. Do we think that our answers to that situation is actually what should be the best to solve the situation in which you are in? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, but sometimes we don't take into consideration like, the, children, the children's feelings. Feeling. Feeling. Yeah, that's what our mother just said. She said she's encouraging us now. Surely. Yeah, I we have some parents this. actually that don't feel that feeling of our youth. That's empathy. That's why she used the word empathy. So if we are able to bring ourselves to that position whereby you are at that time, we can understand better how you are feeling. But I think where we are having most of the problem is not with the parents. It's among we the youth 
I'm not judging now. Listen, it's among we the youth because you also don't want to see the position of the father or the mother also advising you, letting you know that he or she has also passed the stage that you are now. All right. Sometimes we we youth we don't want to see our parents in that light as well. That our parents was like my son. Like okay, let me use you, Angel. Yeah. When you were this age, the things you are doing now, your mom did them. Cannot do. Your mom did them. She has experience of what you're doing. It may be in different location. So when you dress up and you tell her I'm going to so -so place, she knows where you are going. She actually knows where she knows where you are lying. She knows where you are pretending. She knows. So I uh, thank God for this program. So every youth also see us as parents that see us parents as Whatever, whatever we are telling you, we can never lead you guys astray. At all. Whatever we are telling you is also born out of the personal experience we had mm -hmm. when we are also in that age of yours at this very time that you are. Yes. So what will happen is that if you accept what we are telling you and we also give you the best advice, we'll have a mutual understanding. And when that mutual understanding is formed, definitely we'll have a good life together to me. The reason why you have parents falling out with children is because there is no mutual understanding eh, between the parents and the child. I wouldn't want to put the blame on the child or the parents, but that middle, there's a middle, the two, not that there's a bridge. Yeah? So it's a collective effort from the parent and also you, the child. Don't just say, oh, my parents is judgmental. Also, you sit down. We are grown up of age as you. You can't tell me that you don't know between good and bad. Yeah. Tell me that you don't know between daytime and night time. Mm -hmm. Alright? So your your father is telling you don't go out at night. But you are telling your father the night is safe. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and you understand what we have a problem. Whether the night is safe or not, it's not you to tell your parents that it's safe. Yes. You have also made a point. I want to go out. Ah, that's your point. You, you also respect your parents' point by saying the night is not safe. Yes. So you not telling your parents the night is safe. It's like you are telling your parents, you come and be me, yes. let me be you. Yes. All right? I, I know this, if we start this matter like this, we will not end. <laughs> if we start like this, we will not end. But please, I want to beg our indulgence. Parents, you heard that question. Probably, you need to do more for this our team in youth. You need to do more. Because what they are feeling at this time, yes, we felt it, but we may not, we may not felt it the way they are feeling now. So that's how you have to do more. Maybe I hope it's not question related to this. Oh, contribution. Okay. Okay, quickly, let's hear you. Then you take the next question, please. Praise the Lord. So my contribution is, um, so as we also saw from the drama, I think the problem doesn't come from the fact of the parents knowing um, what has happened, like what they've done in the past and what we're doing, is the communication. So even in the, in the drama, the mom, not, the mom saw that the child was not really, you know, into God and she wasn't really doing much. But she didn't communicate it. What she was doing was shouting on her. She didn't really speak to her. So the daughter did not know the problem. So I understand when the pastor said that, yes, the parents already, they probably have done this before. But there's a way you communicate to your child that will make your child understand that, okay, this is the reason why I'm not supposed to do this. No, you're not going out tonight. Yeah, you're not going out. And then obviously, <laughs> you have some children that can be rebellious and be like, why am I not going out? Yeah. Meanwhile, our society already teaches us that there's an explanation for everything. So in school, your teacher tells you something, explains it as well. Yeah. So this is how we grew, we grew up in the house and in school and in our environment as well. So we know that everything requires an explanation. So if you come to a child and say, look, the reason why I wouldn't want you to go out is because of this, this, and that. We will now understand because, and then you can then go ahead and say that this is also what you experienced when you were younger. This is the things that are going on out there. And that's how you build up a relationship with your child. Now your child will even be comfortable enough to come and tell you things and not do things sneaky way or in the back. Yeah, that's God bless you, Sister Maria. Thank you very much for that contribution. But if you, you, you portray what we said, but the truth of the matter is this, yeah? In as much as we are all parents here. I don't think there is anyone, any father or any mother here that will give sufficient explanation hmm, to, to call. If there is anyone here, our parents, please listen. Our children today, they are telling us that, yes, God gave us wisdom to be their parents, but God is also giving them wisdom to also advise us 
in little areas in which the family can be better. All right, please. If it, it, the, the bossy way has never been the best way, okay, the bossy way has never been the best way because the more we keep on bossing these children, the more we lose them. All right, please. So please, let's just hang it on that that uh, knowledge has increased in us today, both we parents and also we the youth. I want to accept that. The next question, who we'll, we'll, we'll come to you, you will answer the next question. Let's take the next question. Um, so my question is, why do parents tend to judge their children in a way that's harmful to them? Let's, we'll summarize it. Let's hear, let's hear the last one. I will, I, will, I will emphasize on it. Let's hear the next, the next question, the last one. Um, do you guys think that by you guys judging of us, help us in any type of way? All right, so it means we are still saying the same thing. All right, before I lay emphasis on what she just asked, any other question from the youth? You have another question different from this she just asked. So how do you how do you encourage open communication with your child to understand their perspective and feelings, and how do you try to balance guiding your child your children and giving them the freedom to make their own choices? Okay, and so sir, the last one. You have another last. You have any other question? Um is uh, when conflicts arise from um, perceived judgment, what strategies do you use to, to resolve the issues? Um, how can you make it uh, as a healthy relationship between each other? Okay. All right, God bless us. Uh, thank God the three questions, they are all about judgment. Uh, they are all about judgment. Not giving the child his or her rights to, you know, exercise what he or she thinks. Okay, uh, who who is bold enough now as a father to come in? Okay, Brother Philip, come. Come. Uh, Tell God you are a father, you are talking from the basket of the father. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, on the aspect of uh, being judgmental, I don't, personally, I don't feel there's any concern as being judgmental from uh, a parent to a child. It becomes judgmental because to you that it has been said to, you didn't like what the person said to you. So you already judged the person by thinking the person is even judging you. And for us parents, uh, we should know that we always cannot win all. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. A child coming to you and saying they want to go out at a particular time. It's not as if, if you know where they are going to or the kind of friends they associate with, that may be some of the factors that could give you a mind rest and say, okay, just go, don't worry, I know where you're going to, I know the kind of friends you roll with. And for us as parents, we should also try to know that um, parenting is an, something more like, an, that should be on an updated status. We always want to see our kids or treat our kids the way we were treated. Like when you say judgmental, some of the things my dad said to me then that I felt was like, no, why would you say anything like this to me? He gave me a pathway through life today. That made me the kind of man I am. So, as it is for the kids or for the children, so it is for the parents. Thank you. God bless you, Brother Philip. Please put your hands together for Brother Philip. God bless you. God bless you. Youth, are we blessed? Youth, are we blessed? Youth, are we blessed? All right, I think in conclusion, uh, Mommy, you have to say something. Can I add one thing, please? <laughs> the one thing is now becoming many things. The one thing, one thing, one thing, plenty of things. Say that's going to judge me now. <laughs> uh, okay, ma'am, hold on. You said a different question. Okay, ask it lastly, then you respond to it and we bring it to a close. No, 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 ask your question first. So we answer last year. Uh, so this question is not about judging, but it's parents understanding the youth that are going to university. Um, this question is based on like. When, when kids finish high school and then college, they're now 
confused or they don't know what to do. And then now parents now come to them and say, you must go to university. Because if you get if you go to university, you'll be able to get this job and you have money. But the problem in the society these days yeah, is majority of people in university, they still don't know what they want to do. And even if they finish university, yeah, it's not guaranteed to get a job. Because it's very, very complicated and difficult. So what they gave us is um, there's something called apprenticeships and internships. Some people want to do it, but the parents they say no, you must go to university. And that now um, bring problems between the parents and the children because the, 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 um, the children wants to do oh I'm doing internship, I'm doing apprenticeship because me doing this I will be able to get a job. But my my parent wants me to go to university because he thinks. That if I go to university, I will not get the job. They need to understand that things change. It's not the same anymore. Back in the days, this is how it was, but now it's not going to like that anymore. So, yeah. All right. Uh, I, I see that we have a bigger problem in our hand. Uh, this service is not enough to actually tackle it. Yes. Yes. Uh, if you. You push, don't put your head together again, it's okay. Please, 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 this is what we'll do. This is what we'll do. We have people going to work here after this service, okay? Youth, me personally, I've recorded everything you said, all the questions, and even the ones you are yet to ask, we'll give you an opportunity to write it down, okay? Put it on your youth platform. We'll pick them. We'll set a day, yeah? At that very day, you will not do most of these activities. Every parent will be present here, will interact with our children. It's going to be a service like this. I promise us. We can give up to two hours for this, and it's going to be for that service. Please. By Reverend Mrs., please. When we continue like this, we will not come on here. God bless you. And the truth, if we want our children to hear us, you hear them us. Like the other day, my granddaughter comes from school. We are just like to say, the teacher wanted to take the phone from me. He draw my hands. He will she not supposed to say, it's like this songs. Why not tell me before? Yeah, he said, if I tell you, I say you go first. I said, why go first? Mm -hmm. If I go back to school and record that to the head of the school. The school had called me say, Mom, Mom, a grandma, we are saying to it. Somebody touch pretty hands in which it's not supposed to touch. You see? Listen to your children. Sometimes we too harsh. Yeah. We too harsh. And now we say before, I don't take our side. It's not good for us. Listen to them. People are what's the tell you we wear the glasses. They match it our children's school. Listen, if we can give you tell them say I will follow you go to school, go and go for it. Thank you, Reverend Mrs. Thank you very much. It's when it's when part the message is, is Hold on, God bless you, God bless you. Can you thank you very much? Please put your hands together for Reverend Mrs. Party. I appreciate her for that great contribution. God bless you. God bless you. All right, all right. In all that we are saying, we must come to a balance. All right, we must be able to balance every situation. Our youth, I so much thank God today for this revelation that is coming through this program. I never knew that we are actually mature to this level to interact with us in this manner. I really appreciate God for this eye opener. I promise you we're going to have a Sunday. Among the Sundays in the month of June, we have a Sunday we dedicated to this. Please put your hands together.